this way, Dad. Didn't you have the guts to face me yourself? I want nothing more to do with you. Only C.C. Capwell would disinherit his son with certified mail. The will stands. You're out of this family, Mason. You're out of my life. Oh, and the great Capwell giveth and he taketh away. I want you to leave this house. What, you want me to leave with only the shirt on my back? No, take whatever belongs to you and then clear out. I can't stand the sight of you anymore. You know what you can't stand, Dad? It's seeing yourself in me. I don't know who you are anymore. You're sickening me. Oh, now that is funny. I sicken you and I spent my entire life trying to be you. You're no more like me. Now get out of my way, Mason. It's easier to hate me than hate yourself, isn't it? That way, you don't have to look at what you've become. I have nothing in my life to be ashamed of, except you. No, that's because I always did your dirty work for you. I was your henchman, so you could keep your hands and your conscience clean. Oh, you're mad. Oh, you wanted Joe Perkins put away, so I went after him. He went to prison. Then when you wanted him back in, I had the cocaine planted on his motorcycle. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't tell you to do uh, that. You, know, you, you wanted the Lockridge property, so I got that for you. I don't blame you. For, for hating me, Dad. I hate the part of me that's like you, too. I wish I could tear it out. You are not going to use me as an excuse for your rottenness. I wish I could tear out the part of you that betrays its own flesh and blood, that puts more faith in scum like Peter Flint you than dare, in your own son. You dare talk about faith? I don't know why I should be surprised. No, you betrayed me your whole life, just the way you betrayed my mother. I'm warning you, Mason. Warning me? <laughs> what, what else can you do to me, Dad? You've already cut me out of your will. You stopped loving me, not that you ever really did. I got nothing else to lose. Even in death, Tanny's got more of a hold on you than I ever did. Is that why you killed him? Out of jealousy? Is that why you murdered my son? Yes, I was jealous of him. How could I not be? He had everything I wanted. He had your love. He deserved my love. He was a kind, wonderful boy. Oh, the beloved son of a beloved woman. That's right. Sophia's firstborn. He was everything that we'd ever dreamed of. He was kind, he was gentle, generous, good. A perfect creature, a god on earth. Yes. No! Channing was cunning and clever and manipulative. He used people, he played them off against each other. Shut up! He used you, Dad, he never loved you. Damn you, I could... Could what? Kill me? Get out, get out of here. You remember the tape you got on your birthday? What? With my voice on it? Yeah, you remember. I convinced you that it wasn't my voice. But it was, Dad. Those are my words spoken from my heart. Remember? I said that you rule with velvet-covered brass knuckles, that you use power to cover your own deficiencies, that you think you're God, but you're more comparable to Adolf Hitler or Ivan the Terrible. You were a monster. I meant every word of it. I wasn't just describing you. I was describing Channing as well. By this time next week, the secrets of the Amanda Lockridge are going to be revealed. And I'm sure it's going to shock the art world. Then you believe those priceless art treasures could have survived a hundred years underwater? Well, see, in those days they had a lot more shipwrecks, you know. And I'm sure that my ancestors were smart enough to protect that cargo. The paintings were probably packed with wax. And we're hoping that they're in that airtight compartment. Mr. Lockridge, do you have any idea what's in the ship's safe? <laughs> Well, I have a letter written by the captain of the Amanda Lockridge to London in about 1884, in which he says that, uh, let's see, what was it? This, this voyage surpasses his wildest dream. Oh, I'm sure there's gold and money and jewels and all kinds of things. I'd buy a used car from you any time, buddy. Excuse me, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I got distracted here. Yeah. The point is, my friend, that the timing is just right, see? The whole town, hell, the whole country is going to get steamed up about the Amanda Lockridge. We've captured the imagination and, of an audience that's starved for romance and adventure. I suggest that you catch the next plane out from Heathrow. Hmm? No, 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 get to Santa Barbara post haste, but, but wait for me to contact you. And don't forget, we don't know each other. Now, you never heard of Lionel Lockridge. Hey. You run my mind just now. No, oh, thinking of the devil, here I am. Come on in. Thank you. Thank you. 
an entry that says simply miscellaneous pieces of art. And since the ship had sailed not only to Europe, but to the Far East and into... Hey, you make yourself at home. You want to tear out my phone wires, too? I can't stand that man. How dare he accuse my family of sinking that old barge of his? They haven't actually mentioned the capitals by name. I don't think he has. Huh? Cruz, a prominent Santa Barbara family who shall for now remain nameless, please. Very subtle. I mean, who really cares if our great-grandfathers uh, played dirty tricks on each other? Sounds to me like you do. Well, I don't. Glad you hear it. That's not why you came over to see me, is it? Well, as a matter of fact, it is. I want to find out what Lionel Lockridge is really up to. What makes you think he's up to anything? This second treasure bit blaming my family. I think it's a smokescreen. Smokescreen? For what? If I knew that, would I be here? Well, I was kind of hoping you came over to see me. Would you help me? Why me, Eden? Because you have good contacts. And you're pretty good at keeping track of people. Uh-huh. So you hiring me for this, or am I just doing it for fun? Well, I can pay you. That's what you really want. You got a sense of humor? Try plugging it in once in a while. Was that a yes or a no? Huh? Yeah, yeah. Okay, just this once. You don't have to pay. You lucked out. It just so happens <laughs> I'm uh, keeping tabs on Lionel myself. Come on. Listen, you want a cup of great espresso? I I've got a brand new espresso making device here. Cruz. Uh, seriously. Why, Lionel? This stuff, you drink the stuff, you know you drank it. I mean, we're talking the mud that moves you, you're going to love this stuff. It tastes good, too. Different kind of way. Go ahead. Pull the trigger. What are you waiting for, Dad? I blasphemed your precious tanning. I deserve to die, don't I? I saw you once put one of your horses out of its misery with a single shot. Killing me ought to be a lot easier than that, Dad. You love that horse. Go ahead. Put me out of my misery, Father. Dad. What made you change your mind? Be quiet. For God's sake, be quiet. It wasn't a change of heart, that's for sure. Now your common sense got the better of you, that's all. Killing your own son in cold blood, now that would be messy. Hard to justify. I'm gonna call the police. Yeah, that's right. Use a system to get rid of me the way, uh, the way we did with Joe. Keep your hands clean once again. How did I ever spawn a creature like you? Like father, like son. With one big difference. Whatever my transgressions, I never did anything as monstrous as threaten to kill my own son or accuse him of murder. The look in your eyes when you spoke about how you hated Channing. You killed him, admit it. I did not kill Channing. I loathed him. I wished him dead a thousand times, but I did not take his life. I don't believe you anymore. The way you didn't believe that Joe Perkins was innocent. Perkins, you knew he didn't do it, and yet you let him take the blame for you. Not for me. Oh, no, not for me. Do you deny that you were in the room the day Channing was shot? Someone else killed your precious namesake. I'm going to go after the one who did it and close the books on this thing forever. But I will never... Ever forgive you for what you did. You are going to be brought up on those charges, Mason. And I believe you will be convicted. Not unless Peter lives. Unless he gives testimony and tells more lies. What are you calling the police? Have you ever once doubted yourself? This is C.C. Capwell. I would like to know how Peter Flint is doing. Thank you. How is he? He's gone into a deep coma. And his vital signs are weakening. Sorry, Dad. Tough luck, old boy. For God's sake, shut up! 
was able to pinpoint the location of the Amanda Lockridge some five miles a shore side of the Continental Shelf. Just, hey, just Dan, Dan, I, uh, I got some news for you. Uh, about five miles off that point. Warren, when you were a little boy, I used to tell you, can't you see I'm busy? I'm oh, sorry, I'm sorry, can it wait? Yeah. What are you doing here? <laughs> I'm making some notes for the book I'm going to write on the Amanda Lockridge. What's your news? Ted Catwell sends you his apologies. For what? For suspecting your only son of shooting Channing Jr. What happened? I don't know. I don't know. He and Kelly just changed their minds all of a sudden. I, he said he knows now that they, he was wrong about me. Well, that's... That's wonderful. I mean, are you sure? Yeah, I was almost as surprised as you are. Well, wait a minute. Peter, Peter Flynn cleared Joe Perkins, but he must have implicated someone else. Now, which lets you off the hook, though, right? Right. Well, that's terrific. <laughs> yeah, Warren. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Of course, I wonder who it is that he's accusing. This is that twin mounted brass weather instrument. The one that I ordered for you. The one that you could hardly wait to get. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. I, I forgot for a minute. Sometimes I don't know why I stay in this business. Because you're a great decorator. See you later, please. Hey, so I thought, wait a second, I'm sorry. I, I just forgot. This is, uh, this is beautiful. It looked great in here. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Did I put you in this lousy mood all by myself? Cruz. Cece's taking over Brandon's life. What? Cece. And Gina's, too. There's not a darn thing I can do about it. Well, maybe that's their business. It's my business, too. It's my son. Santana, I hate to say I told you so. Come on. Gina is moving into his house indefinitely. Well, isn't that better than if they went back to Los Angeles? No. It's worse. I have got to get her out of that house. Because you don't feel comfortable going over there to see Brandon. That's part of it. But it's not just for my sake, Cruz. Do you think I'm that selfish? I don't want to get sucked into this again. Look, I just don't like Cece acting like he's Brandon's father. You know, Gina was going to take an apartment in my building before he got a hold of her. Maybe it's the other way around. What? Maybe she got to him. Don't be silly. You know what? I think you're right. That's what Gina has been driving for. Gina wants to marry Cece. As far as I was concerned, Channing was dead a long time before he was shot. That's a strange thing to say, Warren. It was even stranger to see. I, there was something missing in him. There, it was like a fancy wrapped package with nothing inside. Isn't the way he came across? I uh, don't I know it. I was drawn into that whole spell myself for a while. And there's this terrific guy that everybody idolized. He was exciting. He was fun to be with. Um, generous. And a world champion equestrian to boot. He chose me as a friend. <laughs> chose me as a friend. Drew me into that whole circle. What turned you on? I don't know. I, I, I got too close, I guess. I saw too much. It was really chilling, I tell you. The, 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 the golden boy with, with, with no soul at all and, and a heart of ice. His conscience permanently turned off. He kept all of that hidden. <laughs> Boy, he did a real good job of it, too. That was his mission in life, was guarding that image. And he hated me when he found out that I knew, that I knew what he was really like. But I bet there was more than one person out there who wanted him dead. Warren, there are a lot of cold-hearted people in this world who live to a ripe old age and nobody murders them. Dad, all I can say is, is you didn't know Channing Jr. Aren't you exaggerating a little? You've always wondered why we got the invitation to the Capwell party. To honor Channing the day he was killed. Well, didn't you tell me that it was to make amends or something? No, no, it had nothing to do with it. I mean, Channing was the one who invited us, but the, the reason had nothing to do with peaceful overtures. Was it about the Coens? Yeah. Yeah, he, he knew that I'd taken them. As a matter of fact, that's why he summoned me to his house the morning of the party. I have no, I have no choice, choice, Warren. I'm forced to turn you over to the police. Who's, Who's forcing, forcing you? you? My conscience. You're a common thief. I already said I would pay you twice what the coins are worth. I'll find the money somehow. I don't care about the money. Then what do you want? Revenge. It's sweet, haven't you heard? Especially when it's against a lot. Oh, so that's what this is all about. The vendetta between our families. Is that why you struck up a friendship with me so you could find a way to screw up my life? Oh, possibly. What was your reason? 
to rob us? No, no, I admired you. Past tense, I noticed. Yes. Don't bring the police into this, Channing. It's just going to ruin my family. That's the point, chum. You're sick, you know that? You know, my father always did say that the Lockridge's were no good. I've simply proven him right. And now I'm going to do it publicly. But you want me to confess? You want me to apologize to your family? I'll do anything you want. All you got to do is, is just give me that second chance. Look, I'm begging you. Look, Warren, when I'm in competition, I'm judged on every move the horse and I make. If I make a careless mistake, I lose. I hardly ever make mistakes. There are no second chances. This is not a horse competition. This is my life we're talking about. You want to ruin me just because of my name? You were stupid and careless and you've lost. Now face it like a man. Why did you invite us to this party if you hate us so much? There's a method to my madness. Today when all the luminaries have gathered to honor me and my most recent achievement, and the press is there, recording it, I'm going to make an announcement. What are you going to say? That you stole a priceless collection of rare coins while you were a guest in this house, and that you admitted to me that your father put you up to it. Hey, now my father had nothing to do with this. You'll both be arrested and the capitals will enjoy the spectacle of two Lockridge's swinging slowly in the breeze. It's a gift from me to my father. I ought to thank you, Warren, for making it all possible. This is going to be one of the best days of my life. But Channing was shot before he could make that announcement. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe he planned a whole bunch of other surprises that day. But he could have threatened several other people and someone just cracked and had him killed. Well, whatever it was, it, it certainly worked in our favor, didn't it? Hey, Dad, I didn't do it. you got to believe that. I'm sure there was someone out there who hated him enough to have him murdered. Well, I'm just happy the heat's off me right now, okay? Yes, of course. Warren. Yeah. You know, the next time, they're not going to arrest the wrong person. How do you want this to be, Brandon? As high as the hotel. Oh, the one in France? No, here. Oh, the Capwell Hotel. You remember that, hmm? <laughs> Well, we have a lot of work to do. You better get more blocks. Okay. If he loved it at the Capwell Hotel. He must love it here. Oh, he does. So do I. Cece makes us feel so at home here. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Maybe you wouldn't mind having your little sister come move in with you. Oh! It's a joke. <laughs> well, I'm sure he wouldn't mind. He is so nice. And he likes you. Well, as far as I can see, he likes uh, just about everybody. Although, I think he likes me in a special way. You've always been a special friend. Well, yes, a friend, of course, but... There's maybe a, even more than that. Are you kidding? You're not kidding. Well, big sister, how do you feel about him? Um, Brandon, my sweet, you're doing a marvelous job there. I know. Summer, you don't understand how scary it was when I realized that most of Stockman's estate was going to the creditors. Oh, I tried to be brave and I acted as if starting anew was going to be this wonderful adventure. But deep down... It felt more like reliving an old nightmare? That's right. It wasn't too much fun back then, was it? I don't ever want to go back and live the kind of life we had to lead before I married Stockman. I think it was a little bit harder for you. You had me to take care of. <laughs> oh, you took care of me, too. You remember those little dinners you used to cook for me when I got home from work? Yes, burnt offerings we used yes. to cook. <laughs> yeah, but the worst part, the worst part was that, that desperate feeling. Having to scrounge for a living. Barely making ends meet. Most of the time just doing without. I don't ever want Brandon to have to go through that. Don't underestimate yourself, Gina. You could probably go out right now and find yourself a good job. Yeah, I know. Of course I could. And that would be okay if it were just me. But I want more for Brandon. You know, more than anything in the world, I want him to live like a Capwell. Mm -hmm. I want him to have... The education, the advantages, the connections. I want him to have, to have it all. Well, if that's what you want for him, you'll get it. Oh, really? Is there something you know that I don't? Yes, I know you. 
We had nothing when Mom and Dad died. You fought to keep me. You found work somehow. You're a fighter, Gina. You never give up. That's why you'll get what you want out of life. Who's to receive my inheritance, Dad? I suppose you'll divide it among Kelly and Eden and Ted? That's no longer any of your business. <laughs> of course. Now that I'm no longer a member of the Sanctum Santorum, there's no need to appraise me of family business, is there? Now I know what Mom must have felt like when you kicked her out. That's not what happened. Forget it. I don't have to explain or justify myself to you. Whatever tenuous connection you still had to Pamela, this finishes it. Not that that should cause you any grief. From the moment you two split up, I've had the feeling that you were looking for an excuse to get us out of the family, out of your life for good. Oh, I wanted you with me. Yeah, as long as I was a good boy and did your every whim. But as soon as I became my own man, you couldn't bear to have me around. You've got everything so twisted. But it doesn't matter anymore. Oh, what does matter to you, Dad? I've been trying to figure that out for years. Money and power, well, that's a given. Your family, children, I don't know. Eden went away. She didn't come back for five years. Uh, Kelly's moved out. Even now you're scheming to separate her from Joe again. Ted, yet an unknown quantity. My children and I love each other. We'll always be close. <laughs> oh, I don't know, Dad. As an ex-child of yours, I'd say you're on shaky ground here. No, I think it's more than likely that you'll wind up old and sick and alone and wondering why nobody's coming around. I am well rid of you, Mason. Look at your track record. Pamela and I have learned to hate you. Santana seems quite bitter about you. Sophia, if she'd lived long enough, probably would have gone the same route. Pack your bags and get out. I don't want you under my roof another night. How are you going to live with yourself when you find out I'm innocent, Dad? Huh? Where is it? There it is. Last will and testament. C C capital B in the codicil. Ten thousand dollars to my son Mason. The remaining fourth goes. My God. Goes to Brandon DeMott. I also need you to start a file on the recovery of the Amanda Lockridge. You've heard about that, haven't you? Oh, yes, but why? Well, Lionel Lockridge has been hinting publicly that the Capwells are responsible for sinking that ship a few hundred years ago. Well, I vaguely remember hearing something about that. Yeah, Lionel's been pretty vague on the details, too. But I don't want my family being caught unaware and embarrassed. The Lockridges are ruthless. They do anything to slander the Capwell name. I understand, and I'll start a file right away. Great, and, uh... Listen, any information that you happen to get about Lionel, put that in there, too. Anything is helpful. I have a lunch appointment, and I'll be out most of the afternoon. I'll call in. I'll check in with you, okay? Sure. You can take care of this? Oh, yeah, it's fine. Um, I'm sorry about the circumstances about taking over the office, but I think we'll get along fine. I don't anticipate any problems. Neither do I. Bye. But the position of the Amanda Lockridge shifted during the quake. Yes. Lionel, this is Veronica. Well, welcome home, stranger. Hey, how was it? It was great, but look, I'm calling about something else. I need to see you right away. It's important. All right. Where? Well, can you come to my office? Isn't that a little risky? No, no, we'll be safe here. My new boss, Eden Capwell, is going to be out for the day. Eden is your new boss? That's right. I'll be right there. Ah, there you are. I dropped by the museum. They told me I could find you here. You are about the only reason I would come to this place. <laughs> <clears throat> well, hi. What a surprise. So you look cute. Thanks. For me? Yeah, I thought we'd uh, time around our waist and take off for a trip around the world. <laughs> As long as I'm back this afternoon for work. Mm, that might cramp my style a little bit. <laughs> How about if I give him to this building mogul over here? I think you can find something good to do with him. Oh, yeah, thanks. Ah, uh, Donata Brandon. 
I hope that's all right with you, oh, Gina. Oh, sure it is. I also hope it's okay with you if I steal your sister away for a while. Ask him his intentions. Well, to eat, drink, and be merry with you at my side. I am going to ply you with chili relleno, tostadas, quesadillas, and I'm going to smear guacamole <laughs> all over you. <laughs> your intentions sound fattening so far. So? Do you mind? No, of course not. Let's go. Okay. Time. See you later, Carol. Bon appetit. So long, friend. So good. Why do we have a little more? Why Brandon? Why Gina DeMott's adopted son? Well, hello. Oh, hello, Mason. Is uh, Cece still in the study? No, no, he left. He um, had something on his mind. Mm -hmm. Hi, Brandon. Where'd you get those balloons? From a friend. He saved my life. <laughs> yes, he certainly did. And neither one of us will ever forget that. Uh, well, I'm just glad I could be there at the right time. Helping Brandon and, uh, and Santana. Well, it was a, a big moment. It meant a lot to me. It's a lovely thing to say. Mommy, can I go out and try to fly with my balloons? Well, <laughs> sure, darling, but don't fly too far away, all right? Okay. <laughs> Be careful. I guess one of the biggest moments in your life was when you picked Brandon up to take him home for the first time. Oh, yes, it was an incredible feeling. That sweet little boy, only a few days old. I know Dad was thrilled that he was able to help you and Stockman arrange it. Oh, yes. Well, I, I thought that uh, the family didn't know anything about Cece's involvement in Brandon's... Well, technically speaking, none of us do know, but uh, I was Dad's legal consultant on the procedure oh. at the time. So mm -hmm. I do wear several hats around here, as you know. Yes, I know. Of course, Dad always said that it went smoothly. I just uh, always wanted to hear it from you. Oh, well, I don't think I have much to add to that. Uh, Stockman couldn't be there, so uh, Cece stayed with me most of the time. We are in Acapulco. Yeah, I remember that. Oh, he was very kind. Uh, he had to fly back, but I wanted to take a cruise with my new little boy, so he stayed with us and put us on the boat until it left about an hour later for the United States. And there was uh, no problem on board? The baby was well and everything? Oh, yes, the doctor gave us the okay before we left. Good. We were very careful to get the best doctor available. Doctor, um... Uh, Ramirez. I never actually met him, but, uh, I heard wonderful things about him. Cece wanted everything to be perfect for us, and it was. Well, Brandon's lucky to have Dad for a godfather. Oh, yes, I know it. You don't yet know how lucky he is, but you will one day. Have time to gather much information, but you'll get the idea. Hey, don't be so modest, Veronica. You got enough material here on the locker just to start a best-selling novel. Hey, no, this was not my idea. It was Eden Capwell's. I'm the one who asked you over here, remember? Well, don't be disconcerted. Listen, I'm just surprised that a scrapbook on the locker just is made up by a Capwell. Hmm? I can understand that. You know, Lionel, ostensibly Eden wants information on all of the lockages and the uh, recovery of that ship. But. But she kept zeroing in on you personally. I got the distinct feeling that all of this file business is really about you. That's an interesting notion. Well, can you think of any reason why she'd come after you personally like this? No, no, no. Eden obviously has her own reason. Hey, I'm just glad that you're here. Otherwise, I never would have known anything about this. Oh, Lionel. I can't ever repay you for what you did for my brother. Oh, come on, I told you. You don't owe me anything from that, but you can't do me a favor. What? Find out Eden's schedule, everything about it, who she sees, where she goes, what time, everything that you can ascertain like that. You want me to build a file on her for you? Yeah, yeah, exactly. What else? Find out who murdered Channing Kekman. Me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, your ex-boss Peter has... Managed to exonerate Joe Perkins, but at the same time, he obviously knows who did it. I want to know what he said, and any evidence. Well, I know I'll try. Veronica, this is one of the biggest favors I've ever asked of you. I want to know who he is. <clears throat> That's it. Not another bite can I fit in. <clears throat> what has happened? What has put you in such a great mood? Because I'm with you. And because I'm stuffing my face with a lot of fabulous food, those are two of the three best reasons I know. Something's happened. I know it. 
Mm, that's what I get for getting close to a smart, intuitive woman. She intuits all the time. <laughs> I'm right, aren't I? Intuits, let's see. Intuits. Hmm, sounds kind of dirty. Come on, Lauren. <laughs> uh, look, Your Honor, I do confess. Something pretty nifty did take place. Well, you don't have to tell me if you don't want to. You are such a beautiful girl. Tell me what it is, okay. Lauren. Okay, okay. Look, um, the pressure about the coins is off. Now, I can't, I can't get into any more details, but all I can say is I'm breathing free for the first time in a while. I'm so happy for you. That's great. Yeah, yeah, it's good news. Look, how, how did you ever happen to get to be the kind of person you are? I'm the kind of person is that. Warm, sensitive. Well, I'm that way on Wednesdays and Fridays. On Mondays. Now, stop it. Now, you always seem to do that. Do Change the subject. Every time I start talking about you, you start joking or something. I talk about me all. When? Well, just the other day I was telling you how much I love Monet and Cezanne. Now, that's not exactly talking about you, is it? Now, granted, you do talk about art a lot. Because it interests me. And you and your family interest me. How come? Because you're interesting people. Because I love hearing about other people. Family. No, I think you're nuts. <laughs> I'm not nuts. You don't know what kind of family life I've had. It was Gina and me from the time I was barely a teenager. You have a mother and a father and a grandmother. It's not that I don't appreciate Gina, I do. I love my sister. I mean, she was everything to me. She tried to be mother, father, sister all at once. And she had to fight to keep me from being taken away to a foster home. And she won. In a way, we're more of a family than a lot of people who've never had to struggle to stay together. So naturally, I'm interested in families. I know you have to work to stay together. You can count on other people the way you can't count on family. Would you excuse me? No, no, no. Where are you going? To get my soapbox, as long as I'm giving a speech. That was no speech. That was more of a cry from the heart. Is that what it was? Yeah. You did it, didn't you? Did what? You got me to talk about myself, my personal life. Well, are you sorry? You are a tricky fellow. Hmm. Tricky, but cute, right? Very cute. Mm -hmm. I like you so much. I think a few more meetings like this, and then I'll get pretty attached to you. So far, it checks out. The earthquake did move the Amanda Lockridge on the ocean floor. Which made the ship more accessible. Right. So it looks as if Lionel's really going to be able to bring stuff up from it. Including the captain's log and all the other documents and information? Maybe, if uh, it was preserved somehow. Well, assuming it was. Assuming that in that information, there's certain incriminating evidence in the captain's log. You mean incriminating evidence that would prove the capital sunk the ship? Yeah. What do you think Lionel Lockridge would do with that information? Oh, I think he'd use it against your family any way he could. I think he'd be absolutely merciless. What's up? It's as if we summoned up the devil just by speaking about him. I'm going to go talk to him. Save that for a second, will you? Yeah. I don't have much time, and I'd like to finish my report. Always the pragmatist, Cruz. Go ahead. Lionel didn't make up that bit about the priceless cargo. There is a ship's manifest, and it does indeed list the paintings he mentioned, plus several other assorted treasures. So conceivably, the Lockridges could fall into a vast amount of money in a very short period of time. Maybe that would satiate them, and they wouldn't feel like they needed to, to slander the Capwell name. I doubt it. There's no reason they can't have all that wealth and fame. Revenge, too. It really hurt them to give up the beachfront property to your family. They're never going to forgive you for that. So that's the bad news. Any good news? End of report. Well, now that I have all this information, what am I supposed to do with it? I don't know. I'm sure to think of something. I gotta go. Cruz, what am I supposed to do? Look, I gave you the facts. I can't give you advice, Eden. I guess not. I guess I can't count on you any more than I could in the past. Maybe I thought it would be different. That's a lie. No.
mind if I join you? Of course not. Thank you. That sweater looks more beautiful on you every time I see it. I don't want to talk about that. What would you like to talk about? Don't underestimate me, I don't, Eden. I am not about to let you slander my family name in newspapers, in television, in magazines all over the world. No. I'm not trying to slander your family. Well, that sure isn't the way you've been talking. Look, the log from the Amanda Lockridge, when it's brought up, if it's brought up, is open to public scrutiny. Any information in there is going to be public knowledge. Some people say you're evil. An incarnation of the devil. <laughs> Sometimes I think so myself. Even Sophia thinks that. Why do you always have to bring up her name, no matter what it is? I'm sorry, I don't mean to offend you, right? It's just that you remind me. So why don't you just tell me? Why don't you just tell me all the things that remind you of my mother? You don't want to know. You know. Yes, I do. Sophia was the most fascinating woman I've ever known in my life. She was a study in us. Strong, self-contained, yet vulnerable. Sophisticated, yet oh, so natural. She was complicated, and yet at times could be utterly childlike. Mysterious, and yet she had a vast curiosity about the world. She was so lovely that sometimes I ached just like she was the most eminently exquisite, lovable person. And you are exactly like her. You must have loved her very much. Did my father know about this? Did he know you knew her? No. You must have been devastated when she died in the accident. Santana. Oh, Mason, come on in. Well, I'm glad you're here. Listen, I was really worried about you after you received that letter from Cece. No, I'm all right. I'll be fine. I know you will be. Listen, I, uh, I made some calls. I had to leave a number where I could be reached. I left yours. I hope that's all right. I didn't know where else to go. That's fine. Mason, you can stay here as long as you like. Careful. You don't know what you're offering. Did you speak to Cece? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I uh, spoke to him. Listen, why don't you have a seat? You look exhausted. Tell me, what happened? Oh, everything, nothing. Mason, please tell me. Well, he said things I already knew, and I said some things he'd never heard. He still didn't really hear me. What's the matter with that man? I mean, I thought I knew him. I don't know him at all. As long as you believe me, Santana. Of course I believe you. Mason, I've known you and Channing all of my life. It's inconceivable to me how you could, how he could even think that you would harm Channing. I'm going to fight CC on this. You better fight him the same way I've had to. And I never did really find out what happened between you two. Listen, let's not talk about that now, okay? So, are you going to move out right away? I have to. He's kicked me out. My God. The man is destroying his own family. He did that a long time ago. What are you going to do? Well, that depends. I'll know more after these phone calls. I've looked at the will. He's virtually cut me out of it. Listen, you go ahead and get that, all right? I'm sure it's for you. I'll give you some privacy. Thanks, Santana. Hello. Yes, speaking. Put him on. Uh, Dr. Ramirez, 
Uh, th thank you for getting back to me so quickly. As soon as I heard the name Campwell. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, C.C. Campwell's son. Ah, and how C.C.? Oh, he's fine, fine. He's um, on a business trip at this moment, or he'd be calling you himself. Uh, how can I help you, Mr. Campwell? I'm actually calling about Miss Gina DeMott regarding the adoption papers for his son, Brandon. What about them? Well, it seems like there's a slight hitch, nothing, uh, nothing serious, but it could cause problems later on, and... Mrs. DeMott is uh, quite concerned. <laughs> what is the hitch? Well, there's a signature missing on one of the consent forms. Signature? Mm-hmm. That of the natural mother. <laughs> I checked those papers myself. Well, I'm a lawyer, Dr. Ramirez, and I can tell you these things happen all the time. It's no one's fault. However, it, um, it would be very helpful if you would uh, contact the woman and... Uh, uh, I'm sorry. That's out of the question. Uh, besides, it would be much easier for you to do that since uh, she lives in your city. Well, I'm keeping sort of behind the scenes in this since Mrs. DeMott wants as few people involved as possible. I can help you. I had a dreadful experience with uh, Santana Andrade. What did you say? Santana Andrade, the natural mother. She appeared down here one day out of the blue and uh, gave me a terrible time. Sissy knows a lot about it. I never want to see her again. Uh, you have to take care of this matter yourself. I'm, uh, I'm sorry. 